What's up, everybody? This is Tech G back with another video. And in this video, I'm going to be explaining to you the differences between HTTP and HTTPS in case you have no idea. So let's get into it. The internet is an essential part of our daily lives, and the backbone of the internet is the communication between web browsers and web servers. And this communication is made possible through various protocols, and the most common of which are HTTP, which stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol, and HTTPS, which stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol Secure. Now, while these acronyms may seem intimidating, understanding the difference between HTTP and HTTPS is crucial for anyone using the internet, especially for those concerned with online security and privacy. So in this video, we're going to talk about what HTTP and HTTPS are, how they work, and why the distinction between them is so important. Exactly what is HTTP? So as I stated earlier, this stands for a hypertext transfer protocol. It is the foundational protocol used by the World Wide Web to facilitate the transfer of information from web servers to web browsers. In HTTP, this defines how messages are formatted and transmitted and how web servers and browsers should respond to various commands. All right, so let's talk about exactly how HTTP works. So the first part is called a request response cycle. So when you type a URL into your web browser and hit enter, your browser sends an HTTP request to the web server hosting that URL. The server processes this request and sends back an HTTP response containing the requested resources, such as HTML documents, images, or other media. Then we have what is called stateless protocol. So HTTPS is stateless, meaning each request from a client to a server is treated as an independent transaction. This means that the server does not retain any information about previous requests. So for example, if you visit a website and then reload the page, each visit is treated as a separate request. Then we have common methods. So HTTP, it uses various methods to perform different actions. So the most common methods are as follows. So you have what's called a get method, and this requests data from a specified resource. They have posts. This submits data to be processed to a specified resource. You have put. This updates a current resource with new data. And then you have delete. This removes the specified resource. All right, so now that we understand that, let's talk about some of the limitations of HTTP. And the first limitation is a lack of encryption. So one of the major limitations of HTTP is that it does not encrypt the data being transferred between the client and the server. This means that any data sent over an HTTP connection can be intercepted and read by third parties, making it insecure for transmitting sensitive information like passwords, credit card numbers, or personal details. And then there are other security vulnerabilities. So we because HTTP does not provide encryption, it is vulnerable to various types of cyber attacks, including eavesdropping, man-in-the-middle attacks, and data tampering. All right, next, let's talk about HTTPS. And once again, this stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol Secure. And it is an extension of HTTP that adds a layer of security by using SSL, which stands for Secure Sockets Layer, or its successor, which is TLS, and that stands for Transport Layer Security. And what these things do, they encrypt the data transfer between the client and the server. And this encryption ensures that the data remains private and integral during transit. Let's talk about how HTTPS works. So we have what is called an SSL TLS handshake. So when a user attempts to access a website using HTTPS, the browser and the server engage in a process called the SSL TLS handshake. And during this handshake, the server presents a digital certificate to the browser to verify its identity. And once verified, the browser and the server establish an encrypted connection using cryptographic keys. Then we have the encryption component. So the data transfer between the client and the server is encrypted, meaning it is converted into a format that cannot be easily read by unauthorized parties. This ensures that sensitive information such as login credentials and payment details remain secure. And then we have integrity. So HTTPS also ensures data integrity, meaning that data cannot be altered or tampered with during transit. And any attempt to modify the data would be detected, preventing malicious actors from injecting harmful content into the communication. 
All right. So now that we understand all of that information, let's talk about the advantages of HTTPS. So the first advantage is security. So the primary advantage of HTTPS is the enhanced security it provides. And by encrypting the data, HTTPS protects against eavesdropping and man in the middle of attacks, making it safer to transmit sensitive information. Then there's the trust factor. So websites using HTTPS are generally perceived as more trustworthy and browsers. They often display visual indicators such as a padlock icon or a green address bar to signal that the connection is secure and this can increase user confidence and reduce the likelihood of phishing attacks then there are seo benefits so search engines like google they give preference to https enabled websites and their search rankings and this means that using https can improve a website's visibility and search engine optimization and then there's compliance so many regulatory standards and compliance frameworks such as gdpr and pci dss they require the use of https to protect sensitive data so adopting https this helps organizations meet these requirements and avoid potential potential legal penalties. All right, so let's quickly go over some of the key differences between HTTP and HTTPS. And one of the first differences is that of security. So HTTP, it does not provide encryption, which makes it vulnerable to eavesdropping and data tampering. But HTTPS, it uses SSL and TLS to encrypt data, ensuring privacy and integrity during transmission. Then there's the trust indicator. So when it comes to HTTP, there are no visual indicators of security in the browser. But on the other hand, when it comes to HTTPS, it displays security indicators like a padlock icon, green address bar, and the word secure, enhancing user trust. And there's performance. When it comes to HTTP, this is generally faster, but it does not involve the overhead of encryption. When it comes to HTTPS, it is slightly slower due to the additional steps of encryption and decryption, but modern optimizations have minimized this performance impact. Then we have the SEO impact. So HTTP, it has no SEO benefits, but HTTPS, it is preferred by search engines leading to potential improvements in search rankings. And then we have data integrity. So HTTP, the data can be modified during transmission without detection, while HTTPS, this ensures data integrity, preventing unauthorized modifications. All right, so moving on, let's talk about when you should use HTTP versus HTTPS. So when it comes to HTTP, you would use this if you're dealing with non-sensitive information. So if your website only serves non-sensitive information, such as blog posts, articles, or public resources, and does not involve user data, HTTP may be sufficient. However, even in these cases, HTTPS is recommended for the overall security and trust worthiness of the site. When it comes to HTTPS, you should use this when you're dealing with sensitive information. So if your website handles sensitive information, such as login credentials, payment details, or personal data, HTTPS is essential to protect user privacy and security. You should also use it when you're visiting e-commerce websites. So online stores and e-commerce platforms, they should always use HTTPS to secure transactions and build customer trust. You should also use it when you're dealing with user authentication. So websites requiring user authentication like login systems and member portals, they should use HTTPS to protect user credentials and session data. You should also use HTTPS when dealing with compliance requirements. So if your website needs to comply with regulatory standards that mandate data protection, such as GDPR, PCI DSS or HIPAA, HTTPS is a requirement. And then you should also use it when you're dealing with SEO optimization. So for improved search engine rankings and visibility, HTTPS is beneficial as search engines favor secure websites. Next, let's talk about transitioning from HTTP to HTTPS. So switching from HTTP to HTTPS, this involves several steps to ensure a smooth transition and maintain your website's functionality and SEO rankings. And here are the key steps that are involved. So the first thing you wanna do, you wanna obtain an SSL TLS certificate. So you need to purchase an SSL TLS certificate from a trusted security authority or use a free option like Let's Encrypt and the certificate, this verifies your website's identity and enables encryption. Then you want to install the certificate. So you want to install the SSL TLS certificate on your web server. And the process varies depending on your hosting provider and server configuration. So you want to refer to their documentation for specific instructions. Then you want to update website links. 
So you want to update all internal links on your website to use HTTPS instead of HTTP. And this includes updating URLs and your site's content scripts, style sheets, and images. And then you want to redirect HTTP to HTTPS. So you want to set up 301 redirects to automatically redirect HTTP requests to the HTTPS version of your site. And this ensures that users and search engines are directed to the secure version of your website. You then want to update external links. So if other websites link to yours, request them to update their links to use HTTPS. Now, while this step is not always feasible, it helps in maintaining a consistent, secure browsing experience. You want to verify mixed content. So you want to ensure that all elements on your website, such as images, scripts, and style sheets are loaded over HTTPS and mixed content where some elements are loaded over HTTP. This can cause security warnings in browsers. Do you want to update the sitemap and robots.txt file? So you want to update your sitemap and the robots.txt file to include HTTPS URLs and submit the updated sitemap to search engines. Do you want to monitor and test? So after transitioning to HTTPS, you want to monitor your website for any issues and test all functionalities to ensure everything is working correctly. And you can use tools like SSL Labs, SSL Test to check the configuration of your SSL TLS certificate. Certificate. All right, to wrap up this fun lesson, we now understand the difference between HTTP and HTTPS, which is crucial for ensuring the security and trustworthiness of your website. Now, while HTTP is suitable for non-sensitive information, HTTPS is essential for protecting user data, securing online transactions, and meeting compliance requirements. The benefits of HTTPS, including enhanced security, increased user trust, and improved SEO rankings, make it the preferred choice for most websites. Now, transitioning from HTTP to HTTPS, this requires careful planning and execution, but the effort is well worth it for the added security and peace of mind it provides. And by adopting HTTPS, you not only protect your users, but also enhance the overall credibility and performance of your website in the digital landscape.